Remember the rock, paper, scissors fight from part 4? Imagine the rock, paper, scissors fight, but it goes on for 7 years. That's what Steel Ball Run is like. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Steel Ball Run is the seventh part of JoJo, written from 2000 for all the way to 2011, and it's the worst fucking thing ever. This part is different from the other uh, parts of JoJo. It takes place in an entire new universe after Enrico Busi activated the scratch at the end of part 6 and then did it again after he got killed by the worst stand in the whole series, Weather Forecast. Set in the 1890s, it involves a Steel Ball Run race where a million irrelevant assholes kill their own horses for the prize of 50 million dollars. Like all JoJo parts, there's like a dozen different main characters and you betcha sweet and sour ass that they're all gonna end up dying for stupid ass reasons. In this new universe, everyone's their post-scratch counterparts were all fucking stupid. The main character is Johnny Joestar, an unappealing, boring quadriplegic, and his boyfriend Gyro Zeppeli, an executioner who can somehow magically turn metal green. But enough about those dudes, let's get into the story. So as they're going across America, Johnny discovers the race is actually a plot set up by the president, a funny fuckface, to cover the parts of Jesus' corpse to bring prosperity and happiness to America. And right off the bat, you know how it ends, because just look, look at the state of things today. Holy shit, that's basically it. Like, everyone wants the corpse for a different reason. Dio wants the money, Guy and Hot Pays want to bring it back to their own country to have glory or some shit, and jo Johnny's, Johnny's just sort of there. Like, he doesn't have any reason to be in this story at all, he doesn't do anything. So it ain't JoJo without the stands, and let me tell you, there's some good-ass stands in this volume, like, uh... Hold on, let me, uh... Uh... Civil War is alright. I'm being serious when I say that almost every stand in this shit heap is a rip-off of something else. Like, did Manga Kasa Turu Araki just completely forget about every other stand he's ever designed? Oh, hey, look, that one looks pretty cool. Oh, wait, it's just Echoes again. Like, what the hell is wrong with this? Almost every stand is either a blatant ripoff or just fucking boring. Like, yes, I, I did like Beach Boy. Killer Queen was pretty cool. But I don't like them now that they're a stupid friggin' bird in some headgear in a kid's mouth. What is even with that kid? Like, that's that's gotta hurt him. Some of them don't even make any sense either. Like, Johnny Lucario 378 stand is cool, but it doesn't do shit. Just lets him shoot off his own fingers. Like, wouldn't that hurt? Both John Egbert and Gyro stands just have to do with spin, a new mechanic that exists for no reason. Also, while we're on the topic of stands, how can Gyro Mike Zeppel even see all the stands if he doesn't become a stand user until the very end, which is like six months later? Did, did they just forget all about that rule? It's also nice to know that Araki was kind enough to follow the traditions of decent stand users that die almost immediately, and the tradition of characters who exist only to die. Folks, I'm sorry, but there's no nice way to say this. Part 7 sucks. There's no action, no suspense, most of the fights were so boring that I barely remembered what the hell happened. All the characters suck, Hot Painting dies, there's actual rape, there's an actual face sitting scene, there's a part where J. Johnny Jameson Joestar talks about his malaria fetish for no reason other than to make me feel sexually uncomfortable. Plus Disco died immediately and that's dumb as hell. I am still mad about that. Question time. Why is Funny Fuckface not his usual fat ass self in his alternate universe if there's no corpse parts in the alternate universe to make him buff? He just collect the seven Chaos Emeralds to make him strong or something? If this is just Act 6, where's the rest of the crew? Where's Teriyaki Kakyoin? Where's John claude Van Damme Polnareff? Where's Bull Horse? Oh, right, he died. How did Johnny figure out Zawardo's power so quickly? He just says, Oh, hey, I guess this is what this yellow bastard does. And that's that? Why didn't he have 30 plus episodes of fucking suspense and questioning? Like, is the Stardust Crusaders crew just stupid? No. No, that can't be it. I, I don't know if I'm just blind, but I didn't see Teriyaki Kakuin get flung into a water tower to help John Arbuckle out. And now, the biggest question of all. How did Dio even get the world? There's no explanation as to why he would have it in the new universe. Like, for that to have happened, then Dr. Ferdinand would have had to have the world, in which case he would have just fucked everyone over. To beat him, they'd have to figure out what the world did, and there goes Teriyaki Kakuin to the water tower once again. Then kill him, which they wouldn't have been able to do and take his stand. Even then, a universe would have to have a Dio alive, Dio right next to the home where he is, and Dio with the world. Those odds are literally astra-fucking-nomical. Fuckass must have been in that hole for a really long time. Overall, this part is a cluttered mess. The aesthetic is way off, pretty much every character is unlikable, and I'd honestly just read part 6 again. The only saving grace is the Sugar Mountain and Civil War arts. It is. It baffles me that people can say that this is the best JoJo part. Part 7 sucks. Sure is a good thing that part 8 is better. 
Oh. Dance.